Paul McBeth throws shots at other disc golfers? That's got to be clickbait. Fuck you, disc golf world. Wait, it's real? Jefferson from the disc golf world here to hopefully brighten up your Monday with this edition of the weekend wrap up. Brody Smith went to his second favorite app that starts with X to say, for those wondering, off tour ratings are inflated by around 30 points. This would spark more drama in the disc golf community than Gannon Burr putting. The topic would start an entire conversation on the Tour Life podcast that would lead to Paul Uliberry having this take on Paul McBeth. Paul McBeth is more likely to play a non-sanctioned event, same people, same prize pool, same course, than a C tier. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If it's right next to his house, let's say, oh yeah, that tournament's two minutes away. It's a two-round tournament. He's more likely to play the non-sanctioned tournament rather than the sanctioned tournament. Yuli's take was as guaranteed as a 15-foot putt on a dynamic disc basket because Macbeth was not a fan of that take. He would respond to Yuli via the Tour Life Podcast Instagram comment section of the clip. Gotta give it to Brody. Mans knows how social media works. And that's coming from the clickbait kings. Paul would first respond with, Going off what's said in this clip, since I'm the example, that's not true. I went and played a seat here in Mexico this year, actually. I don't care about my rating and how it's affected. I've never played an event with the thought of, This event is going to help my rating. My goal is to be the best in the world. In classic fashion, Tour Life tags the boy Yuli in to see what the GOAT had to say. I find it funnier that clearly Brody has access to this Instagram account because before Macbeth was able to say anything else, the official Tour Life account made another comment that said, Love hearing you don't care about ratings anymore. That's a classic Brody clapback if I've ever heard one. Macbeth must have known that as well because he took no time to respond. There's no more anymore. I've been proud of my rating records and milestones, but I've never skipped events near me due to their tier sizes. I play events I want to play regardless of their tier or rating they will produce. For some players, your statement is true, but saying Macbeth is guaranteed is putting words in my mouth that aren't true. Why not use yourself as the example? Well, I guess Paul thought it was Yuli's comment, but I'll leave that up for interpretation. Clearly, Macbeth doesn't like when people use his name for clout, which is fair, especially when his name is being used for views on a platform associated with someone he's not in good standing with. But that doesn't stop them from continuing to tell people what Macbeth thinks. Paul not letting this one go, similar to this moment, and I'll never let him forget about this fast decision. Again, putting words in my mouth, I said I don't care about my rating and how it's affected. A rating system is important for the sport of disc golf, am side much more than the pro side in my opinion. Yuli not letting that one slide responded, come on, you literally told me that you would play a non-sanctioned or charity event before you'd play a C tier. This was after your loss in Australia, I think in 2015, so I'm not putting words in your mouth, I quoting you. I also want to point out that although I know this might not be right, I respect Macbeth's opinion a bit more because he clearly went back and made sure the grammar was right and Yuli can only spell 80% of the words right. It makes me sound dumb reading it back, but I don't want Paul coming at me about putting words in anyone's mouth. Again, that should not be against his opinion, but to me, it shows who took the time to project their opinion. But Macbeth wasn't going to leave that unanswered. That instance was because that was supposed to be a four fun round with locals and a showcase that turned into a C tier. That was tied for my worst finish of the year, a one round C tier that I took third place in. I was upset that it's on my stats as a third place, nothing about my rating though. If I sign up for a PDGA event, I want the win regardless of the tier level. That's some goat shit right there. Paul Uliberry defends his position by replying, I stand by my opinion that if there were no ratings, more top pros would play smaller tournaments. It's hard to argue against it. The facts are top pros fade small tournaments because of the fear of hurting their ratings, which I completely understand that. Currently, the system is set up to have a heavy influence on high ratings. A lot of big tournaments are tiered signups. High ratings are important. You do need to be cautious about what you play. I play everything I can and it hurts my rating. If I had not finished the season off the way I did, I would be in a tight spot. Not have a tour card and a rating below 1020. Small tournaments hurt your rating. I just averaged 1,000 and won a tournament. It's a real thing. My opinion is it's a problem. I shouldn't be punished for winning a tournament in the open division no matter how I play. A win is a win, no matter if you win by one or two. Macbeth must have been tired of people interpreting his opinion because he went on to make it public. I guess I should add my opinion. You guys are both on the tour and have lucrative deals with Discraft, but if you didn't have those sponsorships and were just tour players, I'm sure you wouldn't be too keen of being told you can't play non-tour events. You need to be happy with your earning of 17000 and 10000 How about getting someone on the show who's actually those lowered tour card holders and finding out their opinion on this topic? Just to say again, my opinion is biased just off this clip. Drop in the comments who you think won this debate, or if you're just tired about hearing about ratings. 
Yuli found himself in more drama this week as the guys over at Ulti World thought he was on a bit of copium complaining about the emphasis Disc Golf has on the World Championship. The Tour Life podcast. Complaining about how Worlds is overvalued, basically, that like, why does one tournament determine our entire season and like, this is too much emphasis on one event and, you know, why is it this, like, we should value... Look, that sounds a lot like cope from somebody who's never won a Worlds. <laughs> At the end of the day, I do not believe that the person who wins Worlds is the best player of the season. It is still the most important tournament of the season, and we all know that. Do I believe that whoever wins is the you know world champion, like somebody who wins the NBA Finals is the world champion of basketball or the World Series of baseball? <laughs> Just went in circles. <laughs> what is he talking about? Unlike the first argument, I'm on Yuli's side for this one. If you want to hear his full opinion, check out the podcast, but it's always been weird to me how Worlds is the be-all tournament for most players. If even Calvin Heimberg with this insane season would trade it all for a Worlds win, there's got to be a problem with that. I'm not saying it's the biggest problem we need to fix now, but I think when disc golf continues to grow, we should start to think about different ways to show prestige than just one tournament that claims you're the champion of the world. But then at the end of the season, we claim a different player best in the world. Try explaining that in one sentence to someone who doesn't play disc golf. I don't have a solution. Well, I have ideas, but if I wanted to get flamed for my opinions, I would just talk about ratings more. It was a slow weekend for disc golf, which makes sense with the offseason underway. I could break down Drew Gibson's 20k disc collection that made all the Innova fanboys cover their crotch, but I'll make you sit through the 30 minute video like the rest of us. Alden Harris shows off his incredible photoshop skill by posting this picture of Gannon Burr on Instagram. If you look closely, the sign in the back says innovate. I'm sure that's just a coincidence, but the rock hard Innova fans can't be convinced otherwise. I'm still leaning he's going to Disc Mania, but let me know where you think Gannon or Alden will end up for the 2024 Disc Golf season. Eagle McMahon gives a sneak peek of his new step putt in a battle against his dad in a heads up putt off. Now I'm not sure if he's actually bringing it on tour, but imagine a more dangerous eagle from the putting green. I can't even comprehend that in my head. The only other takeaway I had, Eagle for sure was missing those putts on purpose, and Pat was kind of cold with the putter. Looks like putting's genetic. In other Pro Tour news, A tier schedule was announced, and since there are 225 tournaments and I don't really care them that much, I'm not going to talk about it. Sorry. But what I did think was a good move was switching the Las Vegas Challenge to May, right in between the DDO and the OTB Open. Makes a lot more sense. I was going to talk about the PDGA rule changes for 2024, but you guys are going to have to wait until Wednesday for that, because I think it deserves an entire video dedicated to itself. I mean, we got McBest's name in this video after all. See you guys on Wednesday for the rule changes, or if you're lucky, you can just click right here.